Bang! Needs knives. I'm Jared, and how's everybody doing tonight? We have a bunch of knife topics I want to talk about for this live. I actually got something pulled up on the screen. You know, uh, we're going to talk about with ceramic stones. But first, how's everybody doing? I see uh, Q Ball says he's had uh, some two sons come in. That's awesome. Always glad. You guys got a free bell. Always glad to hear when people get some two sons in because I love sharing the um the excitement of like a two son because I, I know there's people in the community say that get knives that are just insane, right? Nine hundred thousand dollar knives. And you know, that's awesome. But there's a lot of people that can't afford, you know, that expensive of a knife let alone a react at $450, but to spend $100, $150 and get a knife of the quality that a two son brings. I mean, it's a good feeling. You, you know, it's like, uh, you know, if you were in the car market or something and you only have $2,000, but you wind up getting like a $10,000 car, you know, that's, that's fun. That's exciting. So, you know, that's what it kind of feels like because with those two sons, man, it's, you know, you spend $80 over here and you get say a knife. I'm just shooting shit right now. N690 G10 steel liners. Then you spend you know, 70 bucks over here, full titanium M390 or possibly like 14C28N, good fit and finish, ceramic bearings on a, you know, on a racetrack with reverse detent ramps and just everything, all the bells and whistles. It's a good feeling. Um, Hi from Singapore. What's up, Singapore? Glad to have you in here. <clears throat> What's up, John, Todd, Monster? Fiend, like a bunch of people are in grateful panic. Cue ball, seen Ed was in here. All right, let me pull it up on my end and then let's get started. So, make sure this is turned down. All right, so first off, uh, ceramic stones. I wanted to talk just a little bit about ceramic stones, we don't have to get too crazy, but I personally believe, in my opinion, every single one of you should have some sort of ceramic stone. If you have knives and you have a knife collection, there's no reason why you do not have a ceramic rod or a ceramic plate. Even if you just get one of those little ceramic stones that Lansky sells, perfect. But for honing and for, I mean, you, there's so many things you can do with a ceramic stone. Like, I mean, even like if you have like a burr, like say on a detent hole, you know, for your detent ball, and your detent's really stiff. Sometimes there's a little burr around it. You can take the corner of your little cer your ceramic stone and knock it off. Or if you've been using your knife all day and you know you um, you want to strop it, but the strop ain't doing much, <clears throat> break out your ceramic rod or the little stone. Two swipes, bang bang. You're not, you keep your knife going, and it helps you one keep your edge sharp. I mean that that's awesome, but it stops, it prevents you from having to sharpen a lot because once you, if you don't tune your edge, you're going to have to take off a lot more steel when you wind up sharpening because you, you haven't been taking care of your edge. After you hit it a couple of times on a ceramic rod, bang, you strop it. Kitchen knives, you know, in the kitchen, when you're, you know, you're using your chef knives and stuff, those metal rods, I mean, there's a place for them. I just want to say there is a place for them. I don't want to give them too much hate, but I don't like them. I, I don't think any kitchen should have them. Get a ceramic rod. It is far, far, far better than one of those steel rods. Those steel rods, it's kind of does the same thing as a ceramic rod, but just with like hardly any effect versus a ceramic rod. A ceramic rod, you can take your chef knife, do a few passes on it, bang, your, night, your edge is nice and sharp. And you could technically put a micro bevel on your edge to really keep it going. Um, so ceramic stones, ceramic rods, invest in one. It will be such a great investment. And also say um, if you you hit something with your edge, right? You're cutting, you, you, you 
dropped your knife or so you just bumped something and now your edge is slightly rolled. It's not a problem if you have a ceramic. You don't even worry about it if you have a ceramic rod because you literally just take your ceramic rod and go whomp, one swipe, hit the strop, done. So it, the ceramic is so hard that it it bites the steel very aggressively and it can do I'm going to I'm going to use the word damage but I mean that in a good way. It can affect the steel. Let's just put it like that. It can affect the edge very quickly. So it's you know it, it's just takes a lot of work out of um you know say say stropping, right? What you would do in tons of stropping, you could just do in one swipe with a ceramic rod. Yeah. Yeah, over 100 likes in the last live stream. That's amazing. I love it when we get um get that many people in here, that many likes. I think that's amazing. So I'm going to pull up just a little page really quick, and it's about ceramic stones. So just so people that don't know what a ceramic stone is, they can kind of take a look. We'll kind of read through it just really quick. I won't, I won't spend too much time on this. Um, let me see here. We got it right here. All right. So what is the difference between the ceramic stones and ceramic water. Oh, wow, it's not showing. Oh, there it goes. Okay. And so the ceramic water stone is something different. That's not necessarily what I'm talking about here. What I'm mostly talking about is just the ceramic stone, which is the first one that they're talking about. Also called a ceramic honing stone or ceramic sharpening stone. A stone manufactured as a fused block or rod of ceramic material. Ceramic stones are very hard, wearing, and usually used dry without oil or water as cutting fluid. Available in medium, fine, and ultra-fine grits, they correspond to roughly 600, 1200, 2000 grit, respectively. Ceramic stones are not the same as and should not be confused with ceramic water stones. Now, my opinion on that, yes, you can use a ceramic stone dry, especially like the rods and things like that. But if you're going to use a plate, I don't agree with using it dry. I would use it wet. Unless if you're just, you know, knocking off a burr or something. Oh, Benjamin, man. Thank you. <clears throat> Let me pull that up. Thank you, Benjamin, man. I appreciate it. You're awesome, man. Thank you for the donation. I appreciate all donations, man. You guys, you guys are awesome. It really does help out a lot. Um, The ceramic stones, though, are like, like the 600 grit. When they're talking about 600 grit... I personally never seen one at 600 grit. Um, I don't know. I don't know about those. Although I've got the, the I've got the medium, uh, Spider Co. And then I've also got an ultra fine. And then I got a couple other ones. But I usually notice that they are more of the medium to high grit. Now you can go from like a 600 to one of those and do really good. Now this ceramic water stone, this is something completely different. It's um, a water stone that's made out of ceramic, um, which it, they are expensive and they are supposed to be awesome. But, you know, we could read it right here, but I personally don't know enough about it to really speak on it. I haven't used them, so I don't want to get too far into that. Now, I've used um, uh, aluminum oxide water stones like... Um, oh, I can't even think of the name of them. I got a set of them. They're also very expensive, but they're they're... Compared to other stones, they're ridiculous to deal with. <laughs> I'm not saying they're not good because they are really good. Um, and I'm talking, what am I talking about? The um, can't think of the names of them. Um, oh man, it's like a it's like a splash and go stone. But anyways, it's a sharpening stone. They are they're kind of fragile. They work good, but they are a mess like to deal with. I can't even think of the name of them. But um, you see them a lot all over. That's why I wanted getting them because I thought they were going to be awesome. 52 people watching. Awesome. Okay. Now, um, I might pull up some other uh, stuff if we, if we want to. Oh, wow. Seth, thank you, man. I don't look up. There we go. What's up, Jared? Got that Fornix had to do right. Awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the donation also, man. Nanawa. Benjamin, I don't know how you know my brain so well. Yes, the nanowatt, the super stones. That's what it is. See, if I'd heard the word nanowatt, it 
instantly got me the superstones. So, yes, the Nanawa superstones, I like them. I think they're good stones. They're basically made out of aluminum oxide. They work great. However, they're they're soft. They're not like extremely hard. They're hard, but like compared to ceramic, <clears throat> they're soft. You can gouge them. Ceramic stone, you can't gouge. Um, so they don't have as long of a life as like a ceramic stone. They are expensive and they do give you a hell of an edge. However, they are messy. You have to flatten them. You have to deal with a lot of water and a like they're just messy. Some people would say the Venev stones are messy. Whew, nothing compared to those. Um, I don't think the Venev stones are messy. 52 people and only 28 likes. Yeah, if you guys don't mind, definitely drop a like. Um, I really appreciate it. Okay, so alcohol, using alcohol. So I always I get asked a lot of times what I use my what I clean my knives with. And also, I'm going to pull out a knife here in a second that I haven't pulled out in a long time. But I get asked um, what I clean my knives with, you know. And a lot of people just say soap and water. Soap and water is good as long as you dry it off really good and oil your knife. But what's even better is alcohol, pure alcohol, because it evaporates. It dries off really fast. So if you got your knife into some stuff and you're worried about it corroding or anything like that, spray it down or, you know, pour whatever, however you can do it with alcohol and it cleans it really fast and helps dry it out. So like if you have, um, like tape goo or whatever on the blade and it's hard to get off alcohol and alcohol is not going to rush your blade because it evaporates. So it's a, yeah, alcohol is amazing. <clears throat> I have it in a spray bottle and I like using it like that because I can, I can literally spray inside of a pivot. If I want, I can, I can spray like inside the knife and then take a Q-tip and rub it around. If I want to, you just, you want to do it quick because it does evaporate. Show our gracious host your appreciation by smashing that like button. Yes. Thank you. Oh, what's up, Mike? Um, okay. So there's something I got on my list that I'm going to talk about with Mike. I might as well just talk about it right now while he's here, but we'll we'll bring it back up. I was, you know, we usually get 70, 90, 100 people, so I figured I'd bring it up then. So, couple things, okay? So, Mike has a custom knife he's making. That's one thing. He's got a custom knife he's going to make for somebody, if whoever wants it. He's, you know, trying to raise a little bit of money. And it's his stonefish, but this is a custom stonefish. So if you're interested in that, you can talk to him and, you know, work some out because obviously he, he'll make it to, you know, obviously it comes one way, but, you know, I'm sure there's other things, you know, that you can talk about doing to it if you wanted it. Um, he's still deciding whether or not he's going to make it a, a hollow grind. He talked about another one. He made a full hollow grind. Um, the, the, the production one comes flat. Um, he says all the, the custom ones have micarta. So it's a badass knife. Let me just say it like for a fixed blade, in my opinion, it's kind of a perfect fixed blade. And I say that because it's tactical yet, um, yet useful, like EDC useful. It's kind of, kind of got that happy medium size where, I think it's a five inch blade if I'm, I'm not, if I'm not correct, or at least close to it. Good size blade, not too big, not too small, really comfortable in the hand. And that's the production one. So you can imagine a custom version of it. He'll get that sucker nice and thin behind the edge. Um, right here, there is some input needed from the customer right there. So basically if somebody wants it or, you know, wants to go in on it, they can, you know, have a little bit of decision making because he's going to try to set it up for the person buying it. Now, another thing. <clears throat> so Mike has a, you know, I'll just leave that part or fuck it. Mike has a buddy that's, uh, you know, his uh, grandfather just passed away and he's got to get back to Washington. So he's trying to sell a knife. It's a custom Strider. A lot of you guys are looking, always looking for Striders. Custom Strider, I know, is another step, but let me say this about the Custom Striders. I've personally handled a few of them far better than the production ones. The, you can't even compare it. Like, the, the titanium, like, you know the lock stick you get on uh, the production ones? I've never felt a custom with any 
any even hint of lockstick. And the build quality is just, it's on another level. They're really, really, really nice. And you just, you can't compare that knife to its production knife. So, but he's selling it to get the money up to get himself to wash Washington. Now, originally it was pretty pricey around 1800. I don't know how fluctuate, like I'm sure I don't want to speak for him, but you know, seeing as the, the times are hard and he's trying to do something, he might, he'll probably work something out. I don't even know if that's what he's selling it for. I just know that's what he got it for. So he might, you know, I don't know. I can't speak for that. But however, if anybody's interested in a custom Strider, get a hold of Mike Emler because, uh, yeah. And I don't have, I can, I can go onto his Instagram and find it. If anybody's interested in some pictures, we'll pull it up. Um, so next thing I wanted to talk about was, oh man, I didn't pull it out though. Son of a bitch. Here we go. He's trying to get out of it what he paid me, 1800 Okay, he's trying to get 1800 out of it. And if any of you guys are actually interested in it, in working something out, or, you know, if you have an offer or something, give him, you know, get a hold of him at least to give him the offer. Don't just, you know, just straight up deny it if, you know, like say if you were going to, you know, shoot him an offer or something, just saying, you never know. It does. It doesn't, it can never hurt. Right. But, uh, let's, uh, what, what is this? Uh, Corey, have you adjusted the stop pin screw? So I'm going to pull out this knife really quick. A knife I haven't pulled out in a long time, to be honest. It's engraved by, Oh, there you go. So it's engraved by mix sun force you know what i'm gonna try doing something while you guys uh you guys chit chat for 30 seconds i'm gonna try doing something really quick I mean, like this. Let's see if i can get this All right, so I'm on Mike Emler's Instagram, and I'm gonna just gonna pull it up. So let me uh, go like this. Think. Okay, so now we are on Mike's Instagram. Let's see if we can find it because he said it was in here. And uh, da, 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 da. oh, some sea snakes. I should start going through some people's Instagrams on here. That'd be fun. Start making fun of everybody on here. Not like I'm making fun of Mike right now, but I mean like other people. Look at that. Sh those shirts that Mike Elmer has. If you guys are interested in one of those shirts, he's got them linked in his videos. I'm definitely going to get one right now. I'm really hurting for cash, but I'm definitely going to get one. I think that thing looks awesome. That's like the type of knife shirts I like. All right, let's see if we can find it. I don't know exactly where it will be. It'll be in here somewhere. I'm, I don't know how far down I will have to go, but a lot of badass knives on here. Oh, there's that brown. Those things are so sweet. Mike, let me know if I pass it. What's up, Knife Sergeant? What we're doing right now is um, there's a guy that has a custom Strider for sale. And uh, his grandfather passed away. He's needing to sell it to get himself back to Washington. So we're just trying to see if anybody uh, is interested. I'm trying to find the picture right now. If I can't find it, you know, no big deal. Like I said, anybody who's interested in seeing pictures or anything like that can always contact him later. Definitely not it. I don't know if I'm going to find it. Watch, I'm like one picture away when I give up. Uh... Yeah, I might have to just give up. I don't. He said it was on here somewhere, but I don't know how far away it is. Look for like ten more seconds. I don't want to bore you guys with just zooming past pictures. 
Ooh, there's uh looks like a custom um <clears throat> sea snake and a custom uh I'll call it where the fuck is this thing? Alright, I'm just gonna give up. Uh maybe Mike can um send me a picture or something. Sorry guys, I tried. <clears throat> Let me uh but yeah. You can probably find it on his page if you have Instagram. So, this knife really quick. Let's pull this thing up. Sorry to waste you guys' time really quick. Or waste your time just now. Does it have a nightmare edge? I don't know. Mike, does it have a, a nightmare edge? He says he's going to send me a picture. If he sends me a picture right now, I'll just pull it up like this. So, he's going to send me a picture. He's got my number, so I'll get it right on my phone. All right, so check this out. It is a Benchmade Morpho. You guys, uh, when was the last time you guys seen one of these? So this is the Benchmade Morpho Balasong Titanium Liners D2 Steel. That is the one downfall, but um, it's a Balasong. So, I, you know, I don't see no problem with D2. And it's got the factory edge. Brand new. This thing's brand new. I am missing one screw that fell out. I think I actually found it, though. So I think I have it, but this is a knife where you could literally, because it's just the standard Benchmade hardware, you could just contact Benchmade. You, they'll just send it to you. Um, are you asking how much for the custom Strider 1800? Are you asking me how much for this Benchmade Bally? Is that what you're asking me? Which one? Okay, I'm trying to find out. That. Okay, Mike, go ahead. Take your time. We'll be here. Um, so this thing, it's got the spring. You just pull down and it automatically pops out but super light i mean this thing okay 1800 alien eight or alan sorry 1800 is what he paid for it he's trying to get as much as he can obviously you know um maybe you guys can work something out damn it, i almost dropped it so the um this thing is super light so that's the one thing with like when you're swinging it <clears throat> It's very, very smooth, but it's like, it's super, um, like I have another one right here. This is a Baron Sons USA made. They're like very budget knives. So if you're ever looking for a battle song and you only want to pay like 40 bucks, Baron Sons, it's USA made and they're decent quality. I mean, they have hollow ground. This one has a clip point hollow ground blade and they also sell, I think they sell a trainer and a regular one for like 40, 50 bucks, maybe more. I don't know. Anyways, my point is this thing is heavy, right? So when I swing this thing, I feel it. You know, I feel the weight. I can feel it hitting my knuckles, you know, not painful or anything. This one is super light. I mean, like ridiculously light. So it's enjoyable to flip the, the G10 on top of titanium. It does have titanium backspacers too. So it's got titanium liners backspacer and clip that's another badass thing it has a clip but uh i don't know man i thought about possibly uh because let me just say this i'm going i'm thinking about or i probably have to do a knife sale soon man it is hard <laughs> it's hard to pick like which one are you willing to let go like you feel like you're like selling your children all right, I'm going to find it right now. Okay, here's the pictures. All right, okay, so here's two different... Yes, it does have the Nightmare Grind, by the way. Okay, so... Make sure nothing's on the screen. Um, hopefully you guys can see that. Let me go this way. No, I ain't going to work. I'll go this way. So that is one picture of it. Beautiful knife. There's one more picture. I don't know how good it's going to come up, but let's try it. It's a little dark, so but it might come up. Come on. There we go. It is a little dark. This one's going to be a little harder to see. But you see it has scr like scroll work or something on it. It's got the nightmare grind. Looks like a stonewash and a heavy satin. 
Um, I'm not sure what the finish is on the titanium. It looks like a, like a, not hammered, but um, I can't even think of what he calls that finish. It's kind of like, like concrete almost, like a hammered, and it looks like it has some scroll work. I tried one one time with that same type of finish. In my personal opinion, I think it feels really good in the hand. It feels really tough. It's not a finish you have to worry about. You know what I mean? Because like, it's it's a finish that can take abuse. Pitting, yeah, pitted, pitted looking, right? So it, unlike, say, something like this, where you drop it or you bump something, you, you chuck it for a scratch. No, nah, not like with something like that, which me personally, I love finishes like that because I like the thought of using a knife as a tool, you know, fucking using it and having the finishes and stuff that, that doesn't sit there and just scratch every time you touch it. I like that. Yeah. And it has like, like, like not, I don't, it's kind of like scroll work, but it's like flowers, like, um, but it's more, um, like Mayan looking kind of, or uh, like Native American drawing on the wall kind of look, the flowers. Um, I'll never see Alan's name without seeing Alien now. I, dude, I, that's what I saw was Alien, okay? I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so, Benjamin Anthem, since I, I pulled it up just a second ago, I know a lot of people really like this knife, and I don't know why, because... It is a badass knife. In my opinion, this is one of Benchmade's best knives. Um, I know a lot of people would argue the 940. Some people would say the Freak. Um, Benchmade has a few good knives, but their, their Anthem is an integral. It's an integral, one solid piece with a spring on the inside that's not like their standard springs. So you're not going to have to worry about it breaking. And it's an access lock. So you're talking about an EDC knife, a standard EDC size that's incredibly strong. Incredibly strong. Very durable. And even though no play any direction whatsoever, it's stupid smooth. I mean crazy smooth it is on bearings too that's why it's one reason why it's stupid smooth like that but i like that it has the other spring i don't know if you guys will be able to see it in there but it's just a regular spring so since it has that regular spring you're not having to worry about omegas or anything and <clears throat> it feels like a very high-end bench made um because it's so like I'm not gonna say loose because it's not loose at all, but it's just so easy to to flick and so easy to drop. Even the the access lock on dropping it, it's it's easier. That spring, like other access locks, when you pull down the, this right here, when you pull this down, it has a stronger tension than the anthem. Anthems are like very easy, even though the spring is strong. Um, the anthem is okay. But definitely not worth four hundred dollars. Yeah, a lot of people say that. Um, so I would argue against that, and I'm not. You understand? I'm not saying I would spend four hundred dollars on it. Um, however, you're talking about a USA made Integral in twenty CV that has an innovative lock. I can't really argue with four hundred dollars. Fucking Riyadh is <laughs> selling. $400 knives that are not integrals, right? Not made in the USA. So I can't argue it. I know that is a price to pay. It is, but it's the only one with a lock like this. So this is a unique lock. No other knife that I can think of has a lock like this. The closest thing would be the Spyderco ball lock, but it's still not the same. Um, then, which is an, an amazing lock. I don't know why, Benchmate and Spider Co. are not taking advantage and using this lock on so many knives. Anyways, but being USA made, 20 CV, um, and an integral, and and to have that kind of work done where you you know everything fits inside there, man, 400 bucks. In a way, I almost feel like it's I don't want to say a steal, but in a way, I feel like it's a great deal when you look at the price of other knives. Benchmade, yes, obviously, Benchmade is overpriced, right? We know that. So 
when you look at something like this, I think it's okay. You know, this is where I feel like it's okay. Now, when I look at FRN knives at $150, that's when I start saying, what the fuck are we talking about? Um, Benchmade makes great $80 knives. They just sell them for $150. Exactly what I just said, Shane. You, you, yeah, exactly. Can we get a chisel sharpening video? You know what's funny? I just sharpened a chisel grind. I'll show it to you guys. I pulled it up here because... Did I? Didn't I? I think I did. I think it's in... Oh, I sharpened this too. <clears throat> I got a couple of those knives sharpened that people sent. A sharp man. I love this Leung Ma. But here, let's take a quick look at it. Look at the edge. I'm going to clean it before I send it back and everything. I'm actually thinking about um, going back over the edge. It's, it is stupid sharp, though. Because there's one, there was, so if you guys don't know the this knife, Liang Ma, you know, or Riet, whichever one you want to say, their plunge right here is stupid. So it, it cuts off. And the reason why is because back here you would touch it. So they just basically cut it off right there. So instead of it being an edge right here, it's just cut off, like as if I just chipped it off. So when you bring your edge all the way back to there, their plunge right there, it, it was a little wonky. So when I sharpened it, right here isn't perfectly straight. It's a little thinner. Or was it thinner or thicker? It's a little thinner right there. But at first, it was really thin. But as I sharpened it up, it sort of came out. So it seemed like it was just like right at the very beginning of the edge. And then it kind of went back to normal. But I don't know. I might. Because one side is a tiny bit thicker from this side to this side only right here. So I might just for the hell of it, go back over it a little bit and see if I can't match it up just a little bit better. It's not bad. I mean, when you when I look at it, if somebody sent it to me, I wouldn't think anything of it. It's it's still good. Like, it's not bad at all. It's just I, I look at it because I'm the one who sharpened it, so I tend to look at it. Edge is fucking beautiful, though. I mean, it's a beautiful mirror edge. I'm specifically just talking about React, you know, not, not the edge. Um... Let's see if we can't get this chisel grind out. Oh, no, that's not the chisel. Where is this guy? Here we go. So, somebody in the comments had to tell me, that's not a chisel grind, Jared. He goes, Jared, that's not a chisel grind. No, nope, it's not a chisel grind. <clears throat> it's like, all right, asshole. <laughs> it might not be the standard flat side chisel grind, but it only has an edge on one side. So the closest way I can say it, it's a chisel grind. Anyways, no edge on this side, right? But edge on this side. I laid it back. I mean, it was already had a big bevel on it, but I laid it back nice and big. Especially since it's a chisel grind. Because this thing's probably 40 thousandths, 35 thousandths behind the edge. But it's chisel grind. So you're only going to get half of that or whatever because it doesn't have two angles. It just has one angle. So um, I think it's 3V and it came out. It came out good. It just doesn't have a lot of bite <clears throat> having the mirror. I did offer to drop it down. Grit. It it's kind of like, yeah, kind of. This is the red horse, but yeah, it's kind of like that. But, uh, but yeah, it, uh, it looks really good. It is still sharp. I mean, it'll shave hair. But I wish it had a little bit more bite. I really do. And 3V, I've never really had too much of an issue with polishing 3V. But this one, I just feel like it should have a little bit more bite. I might just take it. I might do what fucking uh, Mike told me to do earlier and throw it on a, um, a Spyderco Ultra Fine. And because we were talking about S35 VM <clears throat> and we were, we were talking about, this was in his live. <clears throat> we were talking about how like S35 VM drops off after like 600 grit. It's 600 grit though. S35 is fucking, 
it's a it's sharp like it does really good between like 600 maybe 800 grit but over like 800 to a thousand grit it's like the sharpness goes like this and it just goes straight up and then right after like 800 grit it goes Meow. it just starts dropping right now obviously heat treat matters i've had some examples where it's the exact opposite and it just goes up right like if I bring it to 5,000 grit, it just gets sharper and sharper. It just feels better and better. So obviously heat treat does matter, but for the majority of S35VN, you know, it, it drops off. So a lot of times when people send me S35VN, I let them know, like, you know, the best grit for it is usually around 600 grit, but I can try to see how it does, you know, because the heat treat matters. But Mike was saying that uh, take it to 600 put it on a spider coat ultra fine and polish it from there. And he was saying that, um, you know, he's had some that when he does that, it just takes a nasty, like that by the edge. It has that, that still that same bite you want because you don't want it to be slick. Your edge, it doesn't matter how beautiful it is, how good it's cuts through paper and stuff like that. You don't want the edge slick because that's going to be, the result and when you are using it for cutting cardboard rope straps whatever is it's slipping and slipping is can cause injury you know it becomes dangerous even though it's sharp it is sharp it just doesn't have bite and th there's the difference right it's kind of like thinking about a saw blade the teeth on a saw that's used to to saw through wood those teeth need to be there if the teeth weren't there you would just be sliding on the wood so, <clears throat> all right, uh, next thing, uh, oh, well, uh, well, forget about it. So I wanted to bring up this concept stellar because Metal Complex brought something up and I thought it was funny. I think I put it over here though, and I can't get to it right now. So in, um, let me just grab it. Give me one second. <laughs> So, see, I got my, uh, I got my new chest. I'm loving that chest. I got it filled up real nice, like real nice. I still got a couple little things I'm going to change with it. It's real nice though. So the concept stellar, I did a review on it. So metal complex said exactly what I kind of said in my video. So, <clears throat> you know, I said, some people are going to complain that it's not very comfortable holding it like this. But in my video, I said, you don't hold this knife like this. Think about a razor blade. Like if I pulled out a literal utility razor blade, right? You hold it like this. This is how you hold it. This is how this knife is meant to be held. I'm telling you. Or, you know, like this. That's why it is like that. Otherwise, it's just a little three finger knife back here. Yes, you can put three fingers there and curl it around there. And this ain't bad. And if you're going to slice with it, that's what you would do. And it works just fine. It works good. <clears throat> but he said a comment, and I thought it was funny. He goes, I'm sure somebody's going to come up with um, with an excuse of how it's supposed to be held a certain way. And I thought it was funny because I had just posted my video and said that shit. And I felt like it was a deliberate comment straight to me. I don't know if you watched my video or not, but I took it that way. I said, oh, yeah, you're going to do a little silent fucking, I don't know what you call that, whatever you call it when somebody says something, you know, about you, but, um, but it's like, uh, you know, behind, I'm, it's called something. I can't think of what it's called, but, um, anyways, I thought it was funny. I thought he was talking to me because I did say that I said that it had to be, it was supposed to be, or should be held a certain way. And he said that how, you know, like it feels weird holding it like this. And he's like, I'm sure somebody out there is going to tell me that it's supposed to be held a specific way. And yeah, but anyways, it is an awesome knife, but it is a utility. Look at the blade, right? It's a utility blade. So when any knife, I can pull up the Kaiser horn, right? If I'm going to use this as a utility blade, I go like this, right? I automatically go like this. Meep. That's how you hold it. If I grabbed my utility blade out of my out of my tool pouch, that's how I'm going to use it. There are going to be times when I go like this, right? When I, I put my thumb down on it. But in that case, you still can do that. 
and you can slice with it. But for the most part, you're going to be doing it like this. So I just felt like that's – I would imagine that that's what the designer thought. You know, that's how he thought of it. I can't be positive, but got to kick the camera at least once in this video. Guys, you guys know that. Um, no, don't do that. I'm <laughs> – <laughs> I'm messing around, but I think I thought that's how I took it. I almost left him a comment. I almost left him a comment and said, so I'm guessing that message was to me, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm not gonna. Um, and like I said, for all I know, he didn't even see my video. And now if he did, because that's happened to me where I've made a comment, somebody thought I was talking to them and I hadn't seen their video. I don't remember what it was, but I remember the situation. And uh, and they thought I was specifically talking to them. And, yeah, and it wasn't nothing. I didn't even see their video, so it was just me talking. Because sometimes we both do videos, and I'm talking about all reviewers, back to back. And it seems as if we did a video, um, like, in a comment to that vid their video, even though my video was say filmed a week ago and theirs was a month ago and we both didn't have any idea we were both going to post at the same time but it just so happens they both got posted on the same day and it actually seems like we're commenting to each other but it, it wasn't like that's just the way it goes when you have so many knife reviewers youtube doesn't like you shane hey mom ah uh. What was the next thing? Just a friendly reminder to like the videos. It helps the channel to reach more people. If you want more names in the chat, then like the damn video. It helped achieve this goal. Yes, absolutely. It does help the algorithm for YouTube to know that you guys like the content. Even if you dislike it, it lets YouTube know that you guys, you know, it shows that it's getting um, attention. So, I haven't done the video yet, but I am going to record the video on this new strop I got from Urban EDC Supplies. They sent it to me with some of their diamond compound. So, this diamond compound is one micron, which is cool because my other diamond... I got, I got a bunch of different diamond compounds, but one micron's a good... <laughs> A good migron. Come on, Shane. Be nice to MC. We love MC over here. He's a good dude. <laughs> wait, that wait, that shop has a camera. Where the hell did you get that, Jared? What do you mean? Oh, because it's reflective. Yeah, it's it's reflective on this side. I got this from Urban EDC Supplies. They're in Australia, so he has all his own leather, which I find amazing. I'm sh I don't know all the different kinds of leather, but when I do the review, I'll show it so you guys can see the actual texture of the leather. It's really good quality, and then I'll put the paste on, show how I put the paste on, show it being used with and without the, the paste, and then you know I'll use it for a few days before I do the review on it, but then I'll also talk about what else he's got. All right. All right, Mike, take it easy, bud. Peace out. You said you were going to record on it. Oh, you fucking smart ass. Yeah, I'm going to record on it. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to stand. It's my new tripod because I broke my tripod. And I really did. I got a broken one there. The one you guys are on right now, if you guys seen the type of rigging your boy does... <laughs> I literally got um what's that tape called? Um Breeze, what's that tape called that you use to to wrap vents? It's called something. I can't think of what it's called, but those type that type of tape, the metal tape, you know, it's like metal. That's how I got this. I got this thing taped, literally the camera screwed in on this thing, taped to my tripod. I gotta get a new tripod, but we ain't got to, we ain't got time for that. We ain't got time for broken tripods. I don't know. Logical. I don't know. Not duct tape. It's uh, metal tape. It's this is this is duct tape. It's not duct tape though. It's um uh, heating and air conditioning tape. I forget the name of it. It's called something like that. It's just metal tape. It's like aluminum tape. 
It's really sticky though and really strong. So yeah, basically, yeah. Reflecto foil. Exactly. Aluminum tape. Exactly. If you can't if you can't fix it, duck it. If you can't duck it, fuck it. Uh, have you ever tried a dual grit edge on your knife? Coarse on one side, fine on the other side. So I'm going to. I have yet to have tried it. I did see the Cedric Canada thing, and I think that is very fascinating. I think that's amazing. I talked about it before. Was that at the time when he did that, I was actually testing out. Yes, heat shield. Um, I was actually testing out different angles. So where I was doing <clears throat> a big bevel on one side. So like 15 degrees, see the edge bevel, how big it is. And with like 22 degrees on the other side where it's really small. So one side is really big and the other side is really small. And I'll be honest, I was, I'm, I was getting insane results from it. So when I seen Cedric Canada do that multi grit thing, it made sense to me because of and I, I'm not saying that they relate in any way with what I did here. I'm just saying that when I was testing on different edges, I mean, I was blown away with not just the cutting performance increase on it, but even the retention. Like, it, I feel like that it started getting far better edge retention and cutting performance. So the dual grit thing, one polished side versus like a 600 grit uh, finish on the other side, I I'm going to try it one of these days because if you can keep your knife going for like a thousand cuts just from doing that, why not? Just imagine Neve slapping a piece of foil tape on his tripod like the guy does. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's your boy. I had to. <clears throat> no, I didn't, uh, Dustin. I'll look for it. Um... Dustin, Dustin, Dustin. See if I can. Oh, here we go. Okay. Hope you're doing well. If you could recommend one knife that's durable but cuts well and holds an edge for around 400 bucks, what would you recommend? So, what you just described is basically a Sabenza, but they're, I think, 450, 475. So, if you want to go a little bit under that, um, the thing is, is that in that price range, there's a lot of knives. There is. Now, if you want something that cuts good, then you're going to want, you know, either something with a good geometry with a flat grind or a hollow grind. One of the two. 400 bucks, man. There's just so many options. Like, I could sit here and name a bunch. Now, I would not recommend a hinder or a... Um, or a uh, Spartan or anything because they're more thicker. So you're not going to get your slicing performance that you want out of it. I would probably recommend, uh, also I would ask questions like, do you want, you want titanium? Do you want micarta? Um, what size preference? Because I could sit here and name a bunch of knives that would fit the bill, but it might not be like what you're looking for. You know, um, like, um, <clears throat> Like that, uh, that new Wii uh, Fortis or whatever. I got that one coming. This one. Um, but th th they're not nowhere near $400. So it's tough, man. It's tough. Um, I mean, the Gail Bradley is a fantastic knife like that. But you're talking way less than 400 bucks. The Slim Midi, that's a good knife. There you go. The Slim Midi Marauder. This is a fantastic knife, and it's around that price, but I think it's it's more than that, actually. I think it's like $550, but... So, that's it, tough, man. It's a tough question because there's just so many great options. But I would look at Riat and Wii. Wii knives and Riat, if I was you. Unless if you want a... You, or you already got a Gail Bradley, too? Okay. Um... I mean, you could always do the other thing where you buy a knife and then, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry guys, you you buy a knife knowing that there are parts out there. And what I'm trying to say is like, say a Manix, and then you already buy the parts, pre-order the parts, so you're basically building your own knife. You can do that. You can do that with a Spyderco, uh, PM2, PM3, or uh, Manix. You can do that with a Shaman, um, which I think 
all those options are great. And they do wind up, wind ends up coming out to like 300 bucks after you're done, if not more. Just depends. The Spectacle Gil Bradley doesn't get enough uh, praise. I think it, it being Spider Co over Shadow, how great it is. PM2 steals all the credit. Yeah. The one thing, the reason why the Gail Bradley doesn't get enough love, I can tell you exactly why. It's because of the action. It's not, it doesn't have a detent. Like, it has a detent. It has a very soft detent. The detent is super soft. If it had a stronger detent and better action, this thing would be the best knife spider co makes in my opinion because it has literally when it's open let's put it this way when it's open <clears throat> as an open knife it's the best knife spider co makes in my opinion one of because i personally i love the manix blade shape or pm2 blade shape i do but this with this thin hollow grind mine's like ten thousandths behind the edge the perfectly straight ergo so it doesn't matter what grip you're in it's comfortable no matter what perfect drop point blade you got a nice tip or belly nice flat for push cuts um uh m4 steel is fantastic so i do think though if they redid it and they redid it either as a frame lock or even as a liner lock but concentrated on the detent look at that I have to mean to flip it. I mean, I can do it every time without failing it, but it's not its not very fun. So it's more of a knife for this. It's a slow roller. So if you like slow rolling, that's what's up. <clears throat> the Gale Bradley 2 performs better than the PM2, but the PM2 has better action. Right. Exactly. They should use the carbon fiber they use on the Kapara all. Yes, I agree. Because their their fake carbon fiber sucks. Or start using my carta. And I mean selling it with my carta. I think that's such a good I think there's so many knives out there that if they just like concentrated on little details and redid that same knife. So take that same exact knife and just tune it up a little bit. Man, would sell like hotcakes. Hotcakes, I tell you. Hotcakes. What's up, Stasa? Stasa 23 is in the house. What's up, bud? What does that say? Did everyone see the DLT will have hindered knives for sale at 11 a.m. tomorrow, Central? That's awesome. Thank you for saying that. Like sharp dressed scales, I've seen. Yeah, sharp dressed has some nice scales. Um, what was I reading? I thought I was reading something. Uh, my Carta would be nice. And yeah, it, it mine <clears throat> is from um, I think RC Blade Works. Oh, you know, it might be Sharp Dress Knives. I don't know. It's one of the two, but they both have great My Carta. They will have K Bar Hinder at DLT. Awesome, awesome. DLT sounds like they got some stuff popping. So stuff popping. Okay, so now we are going to talk about overstropped edges from the factory. Um, Knife Sergeant says he just bought a hinderer today. I'm about to switch my scales on my three inch. So I have the red micarta, but I have G10 scales. And I know everybody's thinking like, why would you switch micarta to G10? Well, I'm doing it just to change up the color. Because I love this knife. I love the way it looks. I've been really aging this micarta. However, you know, if I just change this, I got like four sets of scales for it from Mr. Amazing. So I can put green scales on here, purple scales, I think blue scales. I think I have a set of brown scales and I can change it up. And I'm thinking about doing that. Also, I, I had planned for... The regrinds from BGM knives. I'm still going to do that, like on the Demco and stuff. However, <clears throat> I'm going to wait till after the review because I want to review it as is, and then I'll do an updated video with the with the grind on it because I do have to put some money together. Battle Black No Choil Slicer. I I I like personally. Um, me with with hinders. I like their choil. Some people don't. 
the reason why I do, depending on which one it is, I like it because um, even though they give you a good plunge grind or a decent plunge grind, with the ones I've sharpened, they if you want to lay the edge back, they they make it to where. And this depends on which one it is because I did see like some of them are fixed or different, but they make it to where like one I sharpened the the stop pin landed right there. So you couldn't cut in a sharpening choil and the to lay back the edge or to remove steel to sharpen it. It wound up getting to the, the, the plunge grind very quick. And I that made me dislike that one. Um, however, I've seen other ones that don't have it like that. Like the stop pin, you can put in a choil. So it just kind of depends. I have, right here we go. I have a reground battle black no choil slicer. The grind is way better. And I had the plunge grind. For, yes, his plunge grind on his reground one. That's kind of like what I'm thinking with like the Demco that I'm going to do because it's a perfect sharpening choil. The plunge grind is way separated away from the edge. It's just perfect. You can't get better than that, in my opinion. Uh, what does that say? What kind of precision sharpening system would you recommend? Uh, work sharp if you're not if you're not doing like a lot, a lot of sharpening, just get the work sharp precision guided sharpener because it is a fixed angled system and it works great. You can get fantastic edges with it. Now, if you have the money and you're talking about getting serious, then a KME or something. KME. But you're talking a lot more money, though. So the work sharp precision guided sharpener. Oh, oh, I forgot to say this. So I'm going to buy one. I have an email set up to get one. Um, where was it from? Regardless, it's a little, so the workshop precision guided sharpener, it's 50 bucks. One of the problems, right? Is that there's no, there's not very many attachments. I know workshop is going to sell attachments. So this place is selling an attachment. I think it's, um, Gritomatic is selling a, an attachment so that you can use that system with their four inch stones. So that means you'll be able to get the 50 grit beast stone. You could use the Neve stones. You could use any four inch stone that Gritomatic sells with the work sharp precision guided sharpener. I hope you guys understood what I just said. So they're selling. Somebody else told me this. So, you know, I didn't find it. Somebody else showed me and I, I'm going to get notified when it drops. It's a, a part that goes to the work sharp precision guided sharpener in order for you to use different stones. That's amazing. Right? That's fucking amazing. So, um, okay. So it was Gritomatic who is selling it. Give me one second and I will figure it out. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to find it, but I will do my damnedest. Give me one second. We will find this beach. So let's go to. Berto. Tick. I'm just guessing. Okay, so do I see it? Oh, here it is. Got it. Okay, give me one second, guys. Here it is. Bang, man, I'm I'm the shit with this thing now. Why is it doing that? Okay. Okay, are you guys ready for this? Bink. There it is. So this makes it to where you can put this on their arm, the, the work sharp arm. And I'm waiting for it to come out. And what it'll do is a four inch stone holder. So Gritomatic sells all kinds of four inch stones, kind of like the same stones, like for a KME. So you can get ceramic stones, diamond stones, Veneve stones, and Gritomatic has Veneve stones. So they have all kinds of stones and you'll be able to, um, ETA end of July, it's supposed to come out. So here, let me see if I can pull up this picture really quick. Oh, they, oh yeah, they do. Okay. So here's a picture of how it will look when it's attached to it. You see how it's just, it's just an attachment that goes to the arm. That's, that's freaking amazing. So it'll make basically 
the WorkSharp Precision Guided Sharpener into a KME. In a way, and I can't imagine this part's going to be too expensive. It's probably going to make 30, 40 bucks though. I'm not sure. Um, but if you look, they have a lot of four inch stones. Like I said, you'll be able to use so many different kinds of, you know, stones for that. So that's badass to me. I think that is amazing and I can't wait. Would you guys do see? So, done with the notify. Nice. Yeah, I got it. I got it. On, I got on it right away when I seen that. Like, hell yeah. Because that makes that system capable of everything, it's capable of being able to reprofile very fast because you could get the 50 grit diamond or 100 grit diamond, you know, plate. It makes it to where you could get Veneve stones to get yourself a mirrored diamond finish. You could use a ceramic stone um, so that you can get the ceramic edge or use it for honing or whatever. It just, it opens that system up to everything everybody wants it to do. Because as of right now, you have a six, a 1200, or no, what was it? Uh, oh, sorry. 325, a 600 grit and a ceramic. That jump from 600 to ceramic doesn't make sense. Now, if you were freehanding or something, then it kind of makes sense because it's just different, right? You, you have a lot bigger stone, a lot bigger surface. Using a little tiny ceramic stone, like that, you'll be on there for like an hour trying to polish that edge with a ceramic. If they had a 1200 grit diamond stone, then let you go to the, the ceramic then it makes sense. Yeah. And you can use the lapping films. I know Timothy, and there's a lot of people doing that, which that's, that's an awesome way to do it. This makes it to where you, I mean, you could do it either way you want. You'll get a similar edge, whether you're using the lapping films or this way. But in my opinion, this makes it to where you could just get a set of stones from Veneve, from Gritomatic, whatever, a set of stones, and those stones will give you whatever you want. No lapping films. You don't have to worry about none of that stuff. You can have a low grit, medium grit, high grit, polish, whatever you want from a set of stones. All right, mom. I'm sorry. I'm, I know this is boring for you, mom. I love you. Thank you for uh, coming in and saying hi. Um, all right. Uh, what was the next thing that we're going to talk about? Oh, you guys, make sure you guys save these things. I know you guys, when you guys buy knives, you get these, and I know you guys are eating them. Stop eating them, first of all. It says right on the packet, don't eat these. It says right there, do not eat these. So, first of all, stop eating them and save them because you can put them in your knife rolls, your knife pouches, your drawers, like right now. I just threw one in a drawer over there. That's for the knives that are in that drawer. Keep those and keep them around your knives. Try to, you know, keep them around your knives. Just stop eating them. All right. Figure I had to let you guys know that. <laughs> okay. So overstropping from a factory edge. I forgot that I was going to talk about that. So what does that look like? Because I see it often. I really do. And I know right away when I, when, if I get a knife with a factory edge, I can tell like that if they overstropped it. So usually what it looks like is that you'll, you'll see the edge, right? Think of a factory edge, a factory edge. The grit lines go straight up and down, right? But then it'll be shiny. Why is it shiny? Because the grit that you see on it, that is the grit of the stone that they stopped with. So say a 300, 400 grit stone. But then it's polished over the surface, even though you can still see the grit lines. That's because they they used a polishing wheel. So a wheel that's an electric wheel, and they polished the edge at the end. So it's not, it's not um, aggressive enough to take the grit out, but it's aggressive enough to take the burr off. So the burr is what they're trying to remove, most likely. They're trying, you know, they sharpen one side, sharpen the other side, 
then they flipped it over and they take that that buffing wheel and they buff the edge really quick flip it over and do it again and just get rid of the burr however sometimes i think the wheel is either going too fast or maybe possibly they have the abrasives on it they're they're um you know whatever they're using for their honing compound and it's fresh so it winds up over over buffing or over stropping the edge what's the result now the result is the edge doesn't have any bite it seems like it has bite and a lot of people mistaken that edge having bite versus it really having bite and what i'm trying to say is it feels sharp right but it's not really like it doesn't have a lot of bite but you can feel like it's sticky a little bit the problem with it is is that will go away the second you use it it's overstropped. When an edge is overstropped, the second you start using it, all the bite goes away because they pretty much stropped all the teeth out. So now instead of being teeth like this on the edge, it's literally like, like there's like a couple little teeth here and there, you know? So as soon as you use it, bang, all them teeth come off. And then it's you you wind up losing the sharpness of the edge now you can go back and strop it and see if you can get some teeth to show back up if you have low grit compounds like there is diamond compounds for strops that are so aggressive you can damn near sharpen on them like i have some that you can see the diamonds i mean it is fucking aggressive if you strop on that shit you can feel the diamonds it almost feels like a diamond plate <laughs> like you're stropping on a diamond plate. And in that case, yes, you can get your grit right back. <laughs> but a lot of people don't have that. A lot of people are using uh green paste, green compound, which is, I think, was it three micron? And then the white is six micron. But when you see that type of edge coming from the factory, just know you have an over polished edge. So what you need to do is throw some grit over it. Hey, lavender pants. What's up, bud? Hey, um, I tagged you in a picture of me and Kara earlier. Oh, I got it on me right now. I got the best front flipping. Well, the guy who makes the best front flipping knives out of knives. Like, you can't get a better front flipper than a Trevor Burger. The Trevor Burger knives, I mean, you just, you can't get a better front flipping action. And... This knife allows you, you could easily reverse flick it just like that. It's so easy. I can do it left-handed. There's only maybe, so far, I've only found maybe two knives that I can do that left-handed with. So that's how easy it is to reverse flick. So a lot of people find it tough to do that. A Trevor Burger, I've known, everybody who I know who's had a Trevor Burger can easily reverse flick them. Their detent is tuned so perfectly for a front flipper. It's so good. It's so good. And this is a full hollow, guys. I forgot to mention that. A full hollow grind. Look at that. All the way up to the spine. Somebody asked me the other day, hey, be, they mentioned one knife. And they said, besides that knife, have you ever seen a knife with a full hollow grind? And I said, yeah. The Trevor Burger. Um, and then uh, the Atlas is what it's called, by the way. And there's a couple other knives. Spanish-tipped razors. Those usually have a full hollow. Um, usually they're standard on uh, straight razors. But the Spanish-tipped razor, not the best tech version, but the custom version, that has a full hollow. Um, and the Dukes. The Kaiser Duke is almost a full hollow. You can see the swedge on top, but it's just the, just the top swedge. The rest of it is a hollow grind. So that's rare, though. You don't see that very often, a full hollow. Mike Emler was talking about making that, that one knife, the stonefish, a full hollow if the person that purchases it wants that. Think about that. That's badass. The case knife I got from DLT has a full hollow. Yes, yes, yeah. That's sweet, man. That That's where you might see it sometimes is on like one of those. But it's not often. That's why I, I think having a nice folder, like a regular standard size, like the, the Trevor Burger or like a knife like this, perfect with a full hollow. 
Because you're not hammering stuff with that knife. You're fucking slicing, and you want it to slice good. You want your tool to be as capable as possible, right? So it makes sense on a knife that size. It doesn't make sense. Like, even on the fixed blade, with a custom, right? You know, he said the last one he did was 11 thousandths behind the edge. That's, to me, that's badass. I think with the right steel, 10, 11 thousandths behind the edge is still a very strong edge. So that's still a very capable flick fixed blade Um, because it's ground correctly. Now, you could go for more harder use, right, and do a flat grind, but then it's not going to perform as good unless if you're talking about chopping wood and stuff. In that case, then, yeah, don't do that. Can you literally hear the grit on the higher micron? Yes, absolutely. High pitch when you drop it. Yes, you hear it. You you can feel it. It's like like you you. It's kind of like going across a diamond plate. Yeah, you absolutely feel it. And you can feel every stone it hits, and you it scares you. The first time I used it, it scared me because I never felt that before. You know, so I almost felt like there was stuff on my strop or something, but no, it was just the compound, but it felt like sand, but it works great. You can use that. If you have, say, three different stropping compounds, you can go from the, the low, medium, and high so that it winds up polishing it out, or you can just leave it. Like after you've um, used your knife and you just want to throw a new grit over it, you can use that low grit stropping compound and it'll throw a grip pattern right over it as if you just freshly sharpened it dr thomas right in part of of his book about the importance of blade geometry so important to me the geometry is the most important part because think about this what's the most important part about a knife what's the i know some of you guys are going to say the action of course no it's the edge <laughs> the edge is the most important part. So seeing as how we're talking about a knife, a tool, you know, the edge is going to be the most important part. Now, the the edge and how it performs is going to be what matters, which boils down to the geometry. The geometry of the blade is going to be the most important part about your knife. Ergos, I think, come second. So ergonomics coupled with good geometry makes a good quality knife because it doesn't matter how good your geometry is if you can't get a grip if you can't fucking grab your knife if you can, if it hurts right it's, now it makes sense to have like say um a small handle on a very thin blade because you need that blade to cut really good and it's small you're not going to have the best ergos but now if you're talking about a thick blade on something that's very small in the hand, that doesn't make sense. You don't have the ergos to push it through something. So in a, with a harder use knife, something that's a little thicker behind the edge, a little more durable, that's where you need the good ergos. You need that good grip. Personally, me, I like to see the great geometry coupled with good ergonomics. Mm, that's what makes a knife. The lanyard... <laughs> <laughs> I'm very much so looking into getting an 80 20.5 shark's foot when they become more available. Yeah, I know a lot of people are wanting to get them. Um, but yeah, they'll be more available. And I'll be honest with you, better versions are coming. Better, ver better versions are coming of the 20.5. So hold your panties because you'll probably get the opportunity to get the better version to be honest. The best part about a knife is that damn box it comes in. I need good packaging. Good packaging. None of this Benchmade box with a bag in it bullshit. I want a good pouch. Check this out. I got this in for mods. Now, before you guys freak out about the mod I'm doing, do it. Listen, so I'm taking the Strider AR and I'm going to grind this lock bar face down. Why? Why? Why would you do that? Because this inside edge is very sharp. 
Okay, if you've ever held one, they're sharp on the inside. It really doesn't make sense why Strider designed it like that and why Medford did it like that. Now, it's not horrible after the lock bar breaks in, but when the lock bar's strong, you know, it just gets irritating. Well, now it gets even worse if you're left-handed. The owner of this knife is left-handed, so when he unlocks it, he has to go backwards to it. So doing that gets frustrating because the tension of the lock bar. So, and this one's not horrible tension, though I held one that was brand new, and that sucker was really strong. This one's not as bad as that, but just knocking that edge off. See how it has two edges? I'm going to knock off the top edge and try to bevel it down just a little bit. Um, I don't want to make it too thin. That's the problem. That's the hard part because I don't, I'm not knocking any of this down, you know, because that would be the next part is to grind this down so that you can get better leverage going back. But remember, he's left-handed, not right-handed. So he's not coming from this direction like this. He's going backwards with it. So I'm going to see if I can't soften it up a little bit and then soften up the edge of this just a little bit for his finger. See how that goes. I feel bad for lefty knife guys. They had screwed too much. Yeah, you know, I, I do too, to an extent, because I see the frustration. Kara is a lefty too, but she's so ambidextrous and so used to right-handed knives. You know, she can do both. However, I do see the frustration because I grab knives all the time and use them lefty. So I see the problems. Um However, I'm getting pretty good with my left hand. And sometimes I, um, like with a lefty EDC, love the dude. But he is the detent diva for a reason. <laughs> uh, ever support a Kickstarter knife? Yes. Yes, I have. Lefties can buy Sabenzas all day long, though. Not us righties. Very true, because there's always a left-handed one available. Lefties are weird. Yeah, it's they're weird from birth. Hey! Hey! Just ask Lefty EDC about the graph, okay? Just ask him what studies show. Because studies, sh sh yeah, studies say it all. I had somebody the other day leave me a comment and he goes this dude's bipolar <laughs> i just liked it um sometimes i go in there and i agree with them like because it's me agreeing so they see that i'm agreeing with them like i agree that fucker's so bipolar it's ridiculous i can't even listen to this guy <laughs> just to agree with them i think it's hilarious thank you david i appreciate that bud I knew that lefty comment was going to rile care up. Yeah, you know, she's in the background listening. Listening. So, zero tolerance. Okay, we're going to talk about zero tolerance now. Why? In, okay, so, zero tolerance. It's kind of aggravating because so many knife companies have been improving their heat treat. I do. I have zero tolerance for zero tolerance. That's a good one. I like zero tolerance. Uh, but why is there Kershaw's heat treats decent and good, but their ZTs are bad? I don't get that. I don't understand how they can have decent heat treats on their on their Kershaw's and poor heat treats on their ZTs. So I was trying to work it out in my mind why, and I can't figure it out. Now, I know they're not using the same steels on their Kershaw, so maybe it has something to do with that. And maybe it's because their Kershaw's are more EDC knives and their ZTs are harder use. So they might be um, doing harder HRCs or higher HRC numbers on their Kershaw's and lower on uh, their ZTs. But it seems like every ZT I run across is soft. It's 
like the first one I ever bought, I've told this story so many times. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but got a ZTO 450 and had the worst heat treat I've ever felt on a knife. It was so bad that to this day, it was one of the hardest knives for me to sharpen. It was not just low. It was bad, like really bad. I, I felt like I was sharpening a gas station knife and that's with S35 VM. Now, since then they did improve it because I wasn't the only one I found out. I found out that I was one of many. Like it wasn't just mine. It was a lot of them with the earlier models of the 0450. However, they did improve it. They did bring it up a bit, right? But now when we start talking about their M390 and 20 CV, they're not getting any better performance than their their S35 VN. And it seems like that they, they're they using 20 CV and they're never, ever bringing the, the heat treat or the HRC up to the standards of M390 or 20 CV. And it seems like it's always so soft. Oh, we were just talking about you is what we were talking about, Lefty. Just got here. You're talking about my Evo again? Oh, we were talking about specifically you. Just you, Lefty. No Evo. Just you. Uh, we brought the graphs out and everything. Um, I had the charts pulled out, the statistics, they were all pulled out. Um, nobody's using ZT's terrible. So their, their knives and build quality are awesome. Well, okay, let me take that back really quick because I, I, I know that they did have some lock bar failing issues. It's just a fact, okay? I personally never ran into one, but I did see a lot of people that had that that issue, right? Where they tried to, to check it for lockup like this, it would just fail, right? It seems that they've worked that out, that, that their knives are better right now, like that that's not an issue anymore, that it was just so many that did have an issue and they don't have that issue no more. Talking about your ego again, Lefty. <laughs> but now that... Their build quality, their build quality is great. Their grinds suck. That's one thing. I think they do need to work on their grinds. I have seen a couple that were okay though, but um, my ZT three hundred eight from Blade of the Stars and Bam. So the three hundred eight makes sense though because it's a like it has a tall flat grind. It's a hard use knife. That knife makes sense to me. Now the heat treat on it, I can't say anything about that because I doubt it's. I'll be honest. I think it's soft. It's probably soft. You've got about a 90% chance of it being soft. But I haven't sharpened one. I haven't tested one. But other people's tests will show you that. Yeah, ZT makes a good knife. Steel, I've heard, is heat treated like shit. My issue is their design sucks. I 1 million percent agree with Lefty on that. Their designs right now, not speaking about their older designs, but their 2021 designs, fucking hell, man. What are you guys thinking? I, I When I seen their 2021 knives, it, it made me smack my head. Like, what are you guys trying to do? It's like the year before, the things that they did made you, like, wonder, like, are you guys trying to go under? Are you guys trying to fail your company? Then, and they did a couple good things. Don't be wrong. Like the 308, that was awesome. And I backed them up. With everything they were doing. Like, I thought that they were just, you know, that they were doing okay. Then this year comes around. It's like, why the fuck did I stick up for you guys? Because I was totally expecting some really good designs to come out for 2021. And they shit the bat. They didn't. It looks like gas station knives. They look like fantasy knives. I think that it was a huge miss on their end. I think they should have kept it simple. I don't mind doing like some wicked grinds or something or, you know, something a little bit out of the ordinary, but they went for knives that literally only certain people are going to like. They should have went for knives that everybody's going to like and work on their grinds. If they worked on their grinds. People would appreciate it. Like I've always said this, if they just took their 0562, right? They're titanium 0562 hinder edition and put a a wicked hollow grind on it right you know how many people would buy that that would go in i mean people would love it um but stuff like that 
you know, do some more hinder maybe additions with some hollow grinds or something, or do just, a, you know, like I said before, the bare knuckle, redo the bare knuckle, do a bare knuckle 2.0 for ZT. Do uh, Please give your opinion on the 0640. Let me look it up really quick because I don't remember which one that is. ZT 06. Maybe I should just pull it up on here and show everybody. But I just, I'd like to see. Oh, so I did have this one in. I think I sharpened it. Um, I did have one of these in. I do like it, okay? And for those of you guys that don't know about it, let me just pull it up really quick. But I do like it. I think it's a good knife. I think it's a solid knife. I, I really do think it's an awesome knife. I think the grind is a little thick on it. And that's kind of the issue with all of them, in my opinion. I think that they should thin out their grinds a little bit, work on their heat treats. Let me just pull this up really quick so you guys can see it. So that is the, the knife right there. Um, everybody knows that knife. I think it's awesome. The clip sucks on the knife, so I don't, they should improve the clip. That is one thing. The clip does suck on it. Um, besides the clip, it's a great knife, but work on their grinds because that's an EDC knife. I know they're going for, let me just say, I know they're trying to go for a harder use EDC knife. I get that. However, we're still talking about an EDC knife. It's as if they're, they're like, they're doing hinder style. And I know like hinder designs and things like that. I get that. There's a point of which it's just a little ridiculous with their thickness. And, you know, that's why people like to do regrinds on their knives. There's a reason why people are regrinding your knives, you know. Just come out with some thinner grinds. Like for a knife. What's up, Evil E? Um, that's why I love Civivi. All their designs are appealing, never too far out there. Yeah, I agree. I, I love Civivis. I think they're great as an all-around knife. They're just a banging EDC knife. Don't get me wrong. I think ZT is badass, and I pray for them for 2022. <laughs> They're going to run themselves out of... If it wasn't for Kershaw and Walmart, <laughs> they'd be out of business. <laughs> because they, they man, they're sh they've, they used to be so great. They used to be... Do you know... Do you guys know ZT used to be one of my favorite companies? It's hard for me to admit that. <laughs> Kershaw definitely was like, especially back in the day Kershaw was my favorite knife favorite knives I had a bunch of them I loved Kershaw their their designs just spoke to me first time I ever tried uh, 14C28N and I fell in love I fell in love Um. okay so let's talk about what was the other thing I was going to talk about there was something where'd it go what the hell? What the, what the hell, Bobby? Why am I not? Oh, here we go. Okay, so... Do, 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 do. Um, I wanted to talk about... Um, the, the, well, the EDC pouch I got... Man, I have been carrying the heck out of this thing. If you guys don't have one, I'll tell you what, man. This thing has been so useful for me. I really enjoy carrying this thing. I kind of thought, I was kind of on the fence at first. Like, man, am I really going to enjoy carrying something like this? I don't even notice it's on me. But I'll tell you what. Every single day I run into a situation where I either need my pen or my light. And so many times I've ran into a situation where either A, I set my knife down, so now I don't have a knife in my pocket, and bang, I still have a knife on me. Or two, when I'm at work, I loan my knife out, and then I need my knife. Bang, I got my other knife. So, I, you know, carrying this, it keeps the things out of your pockets. So, you could, it's, it's so much more comfortable, and I'm telling you, having a pen and a light on you, I use them every day. Every single day I use it for something. And depending on the light you have, you don't even have to take it off of the thing. You can just hit the button. And it'll light up the area around you if it's just a room you need to light up. But 
one of these days I'll get one of the high end ones because I know what's that Kayla knives makes the high end versions of this. I, I do want one. They're thick, beautiful, way more better quality than this, but this is great for me. 30 bucks. And I also can get like a discount and stuff. So yeah, super badass. If you guys don't carry one of those, you should try one. Um, my thoughts have a cheap buck to loan. What? My thoughts have a cheap buck to loan. I don't get it. Um, hey, ZT, lefty said your knife sucks. <laughs> Pouches just don't work for me. Well, this one's, it's. I understand what you mean, because I didn't think it'd work for me either. I mean, I don't know. I've always carried pouches, and what I mean is like tool pouches. So this, you know, is way lighter than my fucking 40 pound tool pouch with a ham with a 20 ounce hammer and full of nails. So this is just convenient. I never feel it until I need it. It, uh, it's great. I love it. I, I, I carry it every day and I'm, if I didn't carry it the day I didn't carry it, I would need it more than ever. And I'd be so upset that I didn't carry it. They're the new fanny packs. I'll take that. Whatever. It's because, you know, it's the badass fanny pack. You know, fanny packs are for fannies. This is way better. I'm still loving my button lock elementum. To me, that is a fantastic knife. Like, as a tool, a knife, it's awesome. I just wish they did have other deployments on there besides just the button. But they did come out with more button locks, didn't they? So they have multiple knives now, or a couple different knives now with button locks. I always carry my triple A copper brass flashlight. Yeah, I switch my flashlight out. Right now, me and Kara last night, we went for a walk at night, and we both had flashlights. I had the Warrior. She had, um, she, I think she had this one. Yeah, she had this one. I had the Warrior. And uh, so, or maybe she had the little one. I don't remember. Anyways, I got him charging right now. My warrior and then the little one. So, yes, exactly. It's You can actually carry the stuff on you without them ever touching or scratching each other. Right? So, you don't worry about you scratching your knife against your flashlight. And it's so comfortable. You don't have to worry about it. I'm... Wait, I'm not vain enough for that, John. You got to make and sell those shirts. <laughs> He's not vain enough, John. Two is one. One is none. Always carry a secondary knife. Absolutely. Yeah, I um, I find that the, like sometimes I don't want to carry two knives in my pocket. And I, if I don't have that, I'll at least have one in my bag. Because I... At work, man, I am constantly handing my knife over. Constantly. And I keep thinking, like, when are you motherfuckers going to get a knife? Like, have you guys not seen yet how, how like, useful it is? You ask me for my knife ten times a day. Why the fuck don't you guys have a knife? They'll go, you know, grab one of those utility blades with a fucked up utility blade on it. You know, and they'll have to switch it out and everything else. It's like, I watched a guy one time break one of those chip in it. Bink, right in his eye. I know everybody talks about that happening, but and it's just like a story, right? It's just like some mythical story. No, that shit happens for real. You know, like using a utility blade and it's snapping and the tip of it flying at you and hitting you in the eye. I actually seen that shit. I also seen a guy one time, he was using a hammer. And when he was using the hammer, he had, uh, you know, like a construction glove on, sweaty, tired, worked all day and was hammering and his glove came off hammer came out of his hand and the claw went wham it didn't hit him in the eyeball but it hit him right on top and i mean yeah he had to go to the hospital is it just patreon some wait someone post jared's patreon yes please can one of the mods throw my patreon now it's linked let me just say this if they can't find it it's linked in on the bottom of all my videos in the description, if you just scroll down to the bottom, you will find the link to my Patreon. And you're amazing if you're looking up my Patreon. So thank you. What's up, Hawaii Knife and Gear? That's why I always keep some poop knives around to give out. 
What's up, guys? How's everybody doing? What's up, Hawaii? Yeah, I I always I try to carry like if I if I'm testing out a nice knife, like a good higher end knife. Yeah, I'm definitely carrying also a work knife. But like the thing, I don't mind handing like I've taught the guys at work you know, the knives and I know what they're cutting. Now, if they come and ask me for my knife and I don't know what they're doing, I'll say for what, you know, but like, if I can see exactly what they're doing, I don't, you know, the things we're cutting usually aren't bad. So I don't really worry about it, but I know what you mean because I have done that on the job site where it's like, Hey, you got a knife, you give me your knife. Next thing you know, you're looking over and they're fucking prying a nail out of a two by four or something. Like, Dude, use your hammer. What are you doing? Yes, it did. It did go well for you. You're talking about on the Patreon, the Patreon giveaway. Uh, someone touches my Microtech Truidon and they lose arms. Yeah, there, there are some knives you do not want to mess around. Okay, yes, definitely go check out Hawaii Knife and Gear. Thank you, Q1 Fiend. And it seems logical. Thank you for throwing up the link to my Patreon. Who doesn't carry a knife? I seen a guy the other day at my work. He walked in. I forget what he was there for. He was working for something, but he had a pocket knife, you know, and obviously being a knife guy, my eyes instantly bink right to the pocket knife, <laughs> trying to figure out what kind of clip is that? What kind of knife is he carrying? And I could easily tell, you know, it's a Walmart knife, right? It was probably a Gerber, Kershaw, something like that, right? I could easily tell that but it's still i still felt myself drawn to the guy right like like you know we're you know we're uh we're kind of the same you know and i knew who he was meaning like he was me a long time ago when like me on the job site where i always had my pocket knife you know he's just working it's just his tool he literally scraped that thing in concrete right and i could tell by the clip that that's the kind of knife user he is he'll use that fucking thing to, to pick a rock out of concrete. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing to do with your knife, but use the appropriate knife or something like that. But, but yeah, it, I remember like thinking about that, like, uh, yeah, he's a knife guy. He's just not a knife junkie, but he's a knife guy. I took a quick glance of your patrons. There's no naked pictures, right? Cause my wife would be pissed. Nope. No naked pictures, just dick pics. Um, uh, if it's naked pics of you, she wouldn't mind. Yeah, just all dick pics of me. <laughs> um, I I try to post like uh, you know, obviously the giveaways and then like more behind the scenes stuff. I did do like one or two skits on there. I'm definitely gonna keep doing that to my you know, you guys like on the Patreon. You know, doing little skits behind the scenes stuff, kind of messages to you guys, and then the giveaways. Um, yes, yeah, story time. So today's story. It's a little different. Okay. So I'm going to tell one little story, but then the next one's going to be more about you guys. And I don't even need this. So then it's, it's more about you guys and it's to protect you guys, right? How to basically not be a victim of somebody looking for a victim. Okay. And you know, you, you guys should probably listen because it's going to have to do with every single one of you guys. Right. So first off, let's tell just a little story about when I was 11 years old and got a tattoo. What a dumbass, right? So um, this is going to be really quick. So when I was uh, 11 years old, I hate myself for saying this, but I unboxed some things from a viewer today. And the Kaiser Land was in there. It's awesome. We got him, guys. We finally fucking found one. I uh, Somebody take a picture of this right now. Please, somebody take a picture. I'm fucking taking a picture of this because this doesn't happen. It, it happened today on Neves Knives Live. Witnesses, you guys are all witnesses. Fucking lefty. There it is. Oh, yeah. Yep. That's going on the internet. Um, <laughs> the Kaiser Land is awesome. It's fucking amazing. And I don't even have it right here. Oh man, it's over there. Son of a bitch. But yes, the Kaiser land is a sweet knife. It makes sense. It, it's beautiful grind. The grinds are nice and even too. I don't know if you noticed that when you looked at it, the grinds are very even, at least on my example. Um, the ergos are good. The action's fantastic. 
It's very lightweight, but it's not it's not a three hundred dollar knife. No, of course not. But that's a fucking user. That's a knife you don't mind, you know, scratching and beating up and throwing to your buddy. Yet it's fucking good. Like that that's kind of the beauty with those knives. Like, no, it's not a knife to show off, right? Unless you're showing off the action. But I mean it's not it's not something to be like extremely proud of, but it's something you can be proud of using because man, it works good. Cut with it. That thing is a fucking laser. And the action, whoo, 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 really good. So when I was 11 years old, uh, can you put a quick stud on? I don't see why not because it's, I think it's a hundred and twenty thousandths blade stock thickness. I'm not 100% about that, but they go up to, I forget what the quick stud goes up to, but that's what it's going to be about is the spine thickness. So, um, quick story though. So when I was a kid, uh, my sister, she was hanging out with, uh, let's say, the bad crew. Let's say that. Let's just say that. And um, and so was I. And I was like 11 years old. And I really wanted tattoos, man. I still love tattoos. And I plan on getting a lot more, right? Like, I just, I like tattoos. Some people don't. Some people it's not for. Me, it is. I like tattoos. So I always knew I was going to get tattoos. Always. So at 11 years old, I'm thinking I'm, I'm full grown, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm fully grown. So I'm ready. Um, and uh I um yeah, so my sister, like it was kind of going around prison tattoos, basically, you know, a needle and ink, you know. And if you guys don't know how that's made, you know, there's different ways of making it, but it's basically like graphite and uh, you know, another mixture, and they mix it up and you just use it. prison tattoos, basically exactly how it's made, but without the gun. And uh, my sister started it on me. And I'm not going to tell you guys exactly what it is, but I will say this. You guys would be maybe not surprised, but it had something to do with a knife. So, which is crazy, right? I'm 11 years old. It did have something to do with a knife, but it was something to do with like the streets and the people I was hanging around at the time. Stupid as hell. Dumb as shit. You can barely even tell what it is or anything. Now it's just like a blob and it's not, you, nobody can see it because it's on my hip. But it was 11 years old, me getting a dumbass tattoo because I'm a dumbass kid doing dumbass shit. Um, I know those kids. <laughs> I had a kid who said he was full grown at 13. He could tell me what he did. I made him regret that. Yeah, I know. I know. And I, I, I didn't, I don't know if I thought I was full grown, but I felt like I was. By that age, I had a full-time job. I was working. Put it this way. Do you know, when I was in third grade, there was a kid in my school that had an arm tattoo in third grade. Think about that. A kid with a fucking tattoo in third grade. And it was some gang bullshit that his dad and mom probably put on him. Crazy, you know. And he's probably in prison. But, uh. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just joking. But, uh, but yeah, I was stupid enough to do something like that because I was ready. You know, I thought I was ready for a tattoo and, uh, yeah, you know, it's not that like, cause where it's at, it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't affect me. Right. It's not like a kid getting a tattoo on the face or his arm. You know, I got it on my hip. So you would, cause I had to keep it from my parents. That was the thing. I had to hide it from the parents. I'm, I'm a big boy but I'm hiding shit from my parents still. Um, and I didn't have to hide much from my parents, but uh, that one I did just, I think because of the disappointment, you know, and in reality, I don't know how disappointed they would have been, but, um, but it wasn't much longer after that. Uh, I was, I was fucking kicking it with one of my teachers and I don't want to, I'm not going to say what grade or anything like that because I don't want to, you know, out her or anything like that. But I was tight, like just smoking weed, selling weed to my teacher, uh, driving her car, uh, doing all kinds of shit. We were, we were friends. Right. And, uh, she even saved me from getting in trouble with the, po with the cops when they did a locker search, she went and grabbed my shit and got it out for me before they got to my locker. Um, what the fuck is that? I, all right. Imagine your parents. The gang specific symbols on you and you get the shit he died before. Right. All right. I think if I remember correctly, that kid that had it, it was just some initials. 
on his arm, but they were big. And you're in third grade. Everything's big. You have little, you know, your arms are little. You're, you know. Luckily, he was very dark skinned. So, but you could see it clear as day. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's crazy. But they do. They do. I've seen that shit. And it's sick. Um, I got two on my chest. First one was decent size. Second was three times bigger. Regretting the idea pretty quickly during the first session. I got a rib cage tattoo, basically my whole rib cage. Um, and I drew that. And then uh, I got uh, my arm. I'm going to get more. I plan on getting sleeves, basically. Uh, yeah, sleeves. My son turned 18 in April. Couldn't ask for a better son to raise. Thank God. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's, you know. I think uh, having a good relationship with your kids is what's important, right? Like me and my mom, you guys see her in here. I have a very good relationship with my mom. I love my mom. She'd do anything for me. I'd do anything for her. We have a fantastic relationship. Me and my dad had a, a crazy relationship, but, you know, a good one. Like we were very, very close. Um, some would say maybe too close. Um, and... You know, it's hard to speak about because it's hard for anybody to grasp the type of relationship I had with my dad and the type of things we did. So it's not easy for people to really understand, like, the lifestyle we had together. Um, so I have a half sleeve on my left arm. That's awesome. I'm going to definitely get one. I'm, my next one, I'm thinking I'm going to get back here so I can, you know, like, kind of finish the, you know, the half part of the sleeve. But. There we go. It, okay, there we go. What's the word, brother? Any plans for Blade West? Man, I don't know. I might have to wait till next year. But uh, how you doing, man? Shout out to Daily Carry Solutions. Definitely go check his channel out. I want to, man. I want to. I just I don't know if it's going to be possible. I really was planning on going to Blade Show. And it wound up not being possible and actually being a good thing. I didn't go because some things wound up coming up and I'm thankful that I, you know, didn't spend the money. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, uh, but I'd love to, we'll just, we'll see what happens. I'm definitely planning on going to blade show next year. So you guys will see me there. I I'll do whatever I have to do to get there. I hope Canada doesn't, doesn't come back because I hate when they show up in here. Now I'm looking at a frozen pick his nose what is it <laughs> anytime the the thing freezes it's always going to be in a weird position like you'll just be like, <laughs> like it's always going to be something crazy no matter what um okay i thought you were wait i thought well they they asked me if i was going to be available if their team couldn't show up and then right before it, they told me that their team was capable of showing up so they didn't need me anymore but so that's how it goes. Let me know I'm local and totally down to hang. Awesome. Yeah, if, if I went, we totally hang out. I want to hang out with everybody. That's the thing. I'm a people person. Anyone near Vermont? I found one guy so far. I'm supposed to go hang out. Well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to, but I think Friday, um, there's a night thing going. Or no, the day after. So the 26th, I'm actually getting this mouth surgery done on Friday. Um, or at least part of it done, it, but there's like this custom knife maker here, not far from here. And, uh, spirited's talking about going a bunch of people are talking about going and I'm thinking about going, I want to, but we'll see what happens. It's, it's a, like an hour and 45 minutes away. So I'd have to like, get a ride to, to, um, to spirit and then jump in with Ryan and then go there. But I don't know, it might be a little bit too rough for me to get there, but we'll see. So now I'm going to talk about, now this is for you guys. 
since I said I was going to talk about it, I'm going to still talk about it. And this is basically to help you guys not look like a victim from the perspective of somebody who's trying to get your ass. Okay. So think about it like that from the eyes of the person that's looking for a victim. Okay. So this is going to help you guys not to look like a victim. And first starting off with like your house, where you live, right? If you live in a house and specifically a house, it can be a duplex, whatever, but a house, right? When somebody's looking for say a house to rob, they're looking for specific details that tell them that's a good place. Now you don't realize what your house says about you. And it says a lot. There's a lot of little details like kids toys in the, the yard, right? Well, that says you have a kid. Well, depending on the time of the year, the hour of the day might depend on whether or not you're home or not. And kids sometimes say specific things to people that, um, you know, that there's a couple probably living there and you're more likely to get better valuables with a couple a lot of times than like, say, just a bachelor, depending, not always. There's certain signs that tell somebody who's looking for a victim, you know, whether now your garage, right? Looking at your garage. If you know things in front of your garage and your garage door is shut, that's, that's probably a good sign because somebody driving by or walking by whatever is going to look at it. And not know if there's a car in there. Now, if you have the same daily routines every single damn day, change them up. Because if I'm looking for somebody to get your, your schedule every day doing the exact same thing, you know, you're, you're like clockwork. So you're easy to get. Next thing, your garage. Like, so if you have stuff in front of your garage, like garbage cans in front of the door or say a junk car or stuff under a tarp or just things, right? Well, that tells me you don't park in your garage. If your garage door's messed up, I know you don't park in your garage. So now if your cars aren't in the driveway, you're most likely not home. So those details though are what somebody sees when they drive by or walk by. They see your house as whether or not it's worth it. So now also where your house looks to, right? So looking at your door, think about your front door. Who sees your front door? If you're standing in your front door, can anybody see it? So if I, I, I you know, you got to think about that. So like if you're standing at your door or if I'm standing at your door and I'm about to put a foot through it, is anybody going to see me? So if there's somebody directly across the street, like another house, where is it placed? If there's one house on the right, one house on the left, but their, their windows can't see that front door, you're a target, right? If you're um, one house at the end of a block, so a dead end street, if you're at the end, you're a target. So there's specific houses that are targets, especially if somebody, like if nobody in their houses can see that front door. That is like a huge sign of a great target because some I can easily go up to that door and kick that fucker right in and nobody will see it and nobody will hear it either because I'll most likely bring a crowbar. So thinking about your house where you live and where your family lives, what it looks like to somebody looking for a victim. So paying attention to the things on your property. Now, listen to this. So the way you do your yard, right? If your yard looks really nice. Now, I'm not saying this is always. I'm just saying typically, right? Typically, somebody who has a very nice yard and property and it's done perfectly. A lot of times they're not going to be so great because they spend a lot of money looking good on the outside versus like the things that they buy, like for themselves, right? Because what is somebody looking for? Electronics? No, fuck no. Fuck electronics. Nobody's trying to come in your shit and get your electronics. Not saying they wouldn't want your PS5 and stuff, but I'm just saying most likely that's not what they're looking for. They're looking for gold. That's the number one thing they're looking for is your gold. Do you wear gold? What does your house say about you having gold or not? Now, not just that. There's also other things, right? Guns, firearms, that's very valuable. So 
the way your house looks and the way you look and your truck looks tells me right away if you have a gun. I can pick just about anybody out of a group and say whether or not he's got a gun. Not just on him, but whether or not he has one in his house. Does he have heirlooms passed down from generation? Because those people stand out that do that, that you know, get stuff like that. An older couple in a house. If you're an older couple, you damn sure got something. Because you got years of collecting. You got stuff passed down that you probably had for generations that you, you haven't passed down to your kids yet because you're still alive. So those type of things are, are in places like that. So not looking like that person is, is very important because you want to be deceptive. You want to be the house that says, I don't know, you know, not the house that says perfect. You know what I mean? So, like I said, the things on the property that are laying around your yard, the way your garage door looks, the way your door faces, right? And it ain't it ain't a bad idea to have, even if it's fake, an alarm sign, right? Because an alarm sign can start some people away. They don't they don't want to have to because even though you know you can beat the clock. Let me just say that. Anybody who has an alarm, it doesn't really matter. Because the alarm is going to go off. I'll be gone. <laughs> Fucking 15 minutes before the cops ever show up. But it still is a way to keep people away. People don't want to deal with it. They don't want to have to know that they are on a fast. They're always on a clock. It's always on a clock. You're always going in. You only have a certain amount of time. You're going to be in and out. But like I said. What's across the street is very important. So that's going to be one of the number one things, whether or not you look like a target is what's across from you and what can see you. The next thing is, is also the thing about this. So like if you have a house next to a garage where you're detached, we're going to start with that detached. There's a door that, that's usually in between there. So that's going to be an easy door. And it's going to be a hiding spot for me to get in because I don't want to be seen getting in, right? Doesn't matter if I walk up. That's not the part that matters. Even if the neighbor's seen me walk up, doesn't matter. They just can't see the, the actual entering, you know, because people, a lot of people mind their business, but you still don't want them to see you. But just saying doors that are hidden from view, that's a target. I mean, easy target, easy way in, just like an attached garage. So garage that's attached to the house. Sometimes they have a separate door into the garage from the outside. Well, that's an easy door. That's the easiest door to get into in any house is that. Next thing, if you have a garage door with the spinner thing, you know, like the front where you spin it and then you can lift the garage. You have no idea. All I got to do is kick the right side and the left side of that, and I can lift it. And I barely got a kick. There's little flaps that go in and out. To When you spin that thing in the middle of the garage, what it's doing is it's pulling two strings, two wires that are opening these flaps. So now I walk to the right side, I shoulder bump it, go to the left side, shoulder bump it, I can lift the garage door right up. Now I also have a door to your house with closing myself on the inside where nobody even sees me open the door. And now if there's a door into the garage, I mean, I, it's on the side. It's never in the front. It's always on the side, at least 90% of the time. So nobody's going to see me go into there and my crowbar is going to be very fucking quiet. So it's not like in the movies where you're crashing and breaking. You ain't going to hear nothing. Not unless if I, I, I don't care. Right. I'm not saying I'm not going to kick a door because that's happened many times. Another thing, just because you look poor, the best things are found in a poor person, not an actual poor person, but somebody who doesn't look like they have money, right? Big mansions and like big, big ass houses that are just like crazy. They have nothing, right? Those are the houses that usually have nothing in them. And it's kind of weird. I'm not saying that all of them, because I've definitely had my fair share of good ones, but I'm saying... The smaller houses, the houses that look like the person doesn't spend a lot of money, regular car, two regular cars, right? A regular house, 
regular lawn, you know, no toys in the lawn, just a regular fucking lawn. That those are the going to be the best. They don't they spend money on things rather than their their house. And like cuz sometimes it's about where they put their money. And you can tell a female when they're walking around if they got real gold or not. And if they're like dressed up in gold and shit, there's more in the house. Same thing with the guy. But like I said, like the, the firearms are the big thing from the guy and the gold and silver and jewelry and rings and necklaces. That's all big value stuff. So that's what you're looking for from the woman or the man depends watches from the man, stuff like that. Um, but ne next thing though, next thing, which is most likely one of the most valuable things people will get from you, your tools, your tools are extremely valuable to anybody looking for a lick. So your garage, if your garage has great tools in it and you have all the other signs I talked about, you know, think about changing those signs because backpack blowers, saws, chainsaws, all that shit is super valuable. And in a time of need, it's more valuable to that person than to you. So knowing what you look like to the outside and to somebody driving by because it's impossible. Let me just say this. This this will really give you a scare, right? Somebody who's desperate, it's impossible for them not to see what you look like. It's impossible. They cannot see you as not a target. It's not possible. They can't drive past your house without realizing where your door's located. What's looking at your door? Do you have cameras? Where's your spotlights? Is there toys in the front yard? What's your garage look like? Is it easy? How's your door? What kind of lock is on it? Like, does the neighbors have cameras? Are they facing your house? Do they even look like they care? Are you at a dead end? Like all these details, man. Somebody who's look, who's who who's desperate, it's impossible for them not to see you as a victim. It's impossible. So just know that when, you, you know, when you're looking at your house, look at your house as a place of, you don't want to look like a target. You want to look like the last place they want. They, they want to drive right past your house, right? You want to look like, uh, eh, not that one. <laughs> That's not the guy, right? Guard dogs are okay, but I'll be honest. I liked guard dogs. You know why? Now this, this is a personal thing. And it's diff other people aren't going to do it. Most likely, if you have a guard dog, you're fine, right? 90% of the time, unless if I was on the job, because I'm a dog trainer, so I don't care about dogs. And every single time when I got inside information on a place after, not saying somebody got accused, but the, the investigation always led to it must have been an inside job. Who the fuck would break into a place with a bull mastiff? Who the fuck would break into a place with a pit bull? Who the fuck would break into a place with a German Shepherd or a Great Dane? Not nobody, unless if they know the dog. That's always what the investigation leads to. You have to know the dog, right? Um, quick story, really quick. I went into a place with the biggest dog I ever seen in my life. <laughs> this mother, well, maybe not the biggest, but it was the t it was super tall. There was one other dog that I I knew that was way big or bigger, like heavier but this guy was a great dane and it was big it was a big motherfucker and he ran up to me and he didn't know what to do because i i gave the body language that i would give to any aggressive dog which said you don't have the authority to touch me and if you understand dog training it's easy to give that that behavior off so i did that so when he ran up to me he ran to me aggressive as shit right what are you doing to my sh And he ran to me and he got up to me and he stopped and he didn't know what to do. He starts sniffing me. He's growling the entire time, right? Following me, right? He won't leave my hip, but he also won't bite me because he knows he's not allowed to because he can sense my body language is saying, you don't have the authority. So he just followed me. I want to blocking him in a room, giving him a steak or something. <laughs> I usually always fed him. Let me be honest. I fed your dog. If I was in your shit, I fed your dog. So I treated your dog real good. Let me tell you. Um, but, uh, but no, usually though, no, a dog does. It's a great, 
even a small dog because they're an alarm. <laughs> but uh, but it all depends. Not always. Not always. Um, I got. Never mind. I'm not even tell that story's for another day. Maybe I'll tell it one day. But about a, a small dog, my, the, my interaction with a small dog that didn't go well. Um, how you just think of how you would rob you? Yeah, I, it'd be difficult. Um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I've been robbed so I, <laughs> plenty of times. So I know, I definitely know what it's like, but uh, I know what it's like being on the other end and what they see, what they want, especially what they want, what they're looking for and the ease, because it's, it doesn't always have to be easy. I mean, I, I, if you guys knew the ridiculous things I've done, I mean, you guys wouldn't think that it had to be easy. <laughs> you don't have to be an easy target. Sometimes you, you are the hard target and that's the beauty of it. Because an easy target is too easy, meaning that there everybody can like no, I don't know. It's kind of like people can see it. It's just too easy. But like a hard target's usually more secluded. It's more you know. There's probably more in there. It's more locked up. So they can, you know they obviously have more stuff. So it just depends. But uh, but. There, there's things about you and what you drive, what you drive, the way you walk, the clothes you wear, the hats you have on, the things your wife, girlfriend is driving, the kids you have, the the driveway you have, the garage you have, the door you have, the yard you have, that all say something about you on whether or not you're a good target. So just letting you guys know and uh, take it how you want it. Uh, just trying to help out, you know, do my my good duties for the day. Remote control rope. <laughs> mount, shotgun mount controlled from your phone. There you go. There you go. If, yeah, the crack definitely kills kids. Well, it's not the crack that kills kids. It's the, the other things, but yeah. Don't be a dirtbag with, with, wait, that what it comes down to. No, I'm saying um, how, because there's there's always going to be dirtbags. You'll never not be around dirtbags. You might not be around any, but they're around you. And they watch you. They see you. They see your movements. And I'm just trying to say how not to, to be that guy that they... Yeah, because like I said, there's there's just signs that where literally nobody, n literally nobody would want to touch your shit, right? There's literally signs you have that that tell a person you're not a good target, and that's what I'm trying to get you guys to understand is how to look like that, how to look like the guy that they would, they're literally their vision wouldn't even look at it, that they couldn't see it, like if they seen like um uh, like the predator, you would blend in. <laughs> You would not look like that that like that red thing, right? You guys seen Predator, right? The way how he sees red and everything, and everything else is blue. There's a way to do that. Yep, they do. I understand what you are saying. I'm saying if you steal your dirt bag, yeah, yeah, definitely. But people do, people do. It's just the way shit is. And to a person that's stealing, it's not even stealing; it's survival. So I promise you. Daniel, in a fucking situation, you're a killer and a thief too. So don't don't be mistaken. I'm a desperate situation when it's down to survival and you got to survive. You're going to do whatever it takes. So anybody who says different is lying to their self. Nobody knows what they're capable of until put into a desperate situation. Yeah. Yeah, I had... um. Man, I've had insurance on stuff and had things happen um, and had to collect it before. Um, and then I've also had times where I didn't collect it and probably should have. But but yeah, insurance on your stuff is definitely good. Um, and on your actual belongings, you know. Uh, half the time they ain't stealing food to survive or water or shelter. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised what somebody really needs or wants. Um, 
I'll die with my mustard monster. <laughs> Are you what? Are you r- related, uh, realted to the cooks? I don't know what that means. Am I related to the cooks? Who's the cooks? I don't know who the cooks are. I don't think so. I'm related to a lot of people. You just said they won't. Well, I'm just saying like that's the that's number one, right? That's number one. Obviously, people want cash too, right? If they can get cash, that's there, there's just there's like levels, right? So there is a point of which somebody needs and wants food. Um, I've been in places and first thing I went to was the fridge. So that tells you the desperation. But usually when somebody wants food, they go to a store. They usually go to a store or places like that. Not saying that somebody who's desperate ain't going to go through your fridge, right? (laughs) They will. They really will because they're that hungry and they need something in the moment to give them the energy. right? Um, Oh, thank you, Mark. Thank you, man. My mama always told me I ain't raised no bitch. There you go. Um, Damn right. But, uh, but no, yeah, usually it is something, but usually somebody will go to a store for that, for food, right? Because it's easier. It's easier. You don't have to worry about shit. It's, you know, it's pretty easy in a store, depending on the store. But, uh, but yeah, it's, you know, with, man, is it this bad is canada still in here yeah because of the laws law. wait laws lock the fools up for a pack of gum. well it depends on the state but if it's under say a thousand dollars it's a misdemeanor so you can you can sign yourself out if you have it depends on if you how much you've been caught for and stuff like that but little things ain't it just depends but if you've been in trouble then it's a big deal but it's still just going to be a misdemeanor but you can only get so many misdemeanors before they'll lock your ass up for misdemeanors they are maggots just say if he is mad he's a maggot as well live on i don't know what that means they are maggots just say it if he is mad he is a maggot as well live on Oat Toral says it every day. I don't know what that means. <laughs> you don't have to keep caps lock on. Lowercase letters work just fine for the rest of us. <laughs> I like the cap. <laughs> oh, you guys are hilarious. Um, I think Canada has been in here, but um, what does that say? Canada is, a, is the nice apartment above a mountain. <laughs> Oh, you guys are crazy. We're going to get out of here in five minutes. I'm just, I'm having a good time with you guys. So I'm going to do five more minutes. I know normally we would have been out of here 13 minutes ago, but what is there? 68 people in here. Um, but yeah, I'm just trying to relate the, you know, like, um, of, you know, just certain things, how people see the world. I don't think people realize sometimes what they look like and how, what they appear to other people and i don't care where you live so you might think you're in a good area that don't fucking matter you might think you know just the obviously if you're in a better area you have less likely of a chance but you never know who's coming to your area right so but i'm just saying um it's good to uh to not look like that you know same thing with your businesses and stuff you know keeping your businesses in a way that you know doesn't you know, look like that. Ain't no shame in my game. I don't like these. They're dirt bag, straight up petty thief. It is called. Yeah, I don't think anybody does. That's the point. Isn't that the point? Like, it's not glorifying fucking thieves. It's saying they're going to be out there. All right. <laughs> Doesn't matter if they're, that's the point. They're dirt bags, right? They're going to do dirty ass shit. They're going to do desperate, dirty shit that's fucking horrible. And yeah, they're a piece of shit for doing it. Fact is, is they're out there, and the fact is, is that they, that you know, that's not how it does. Their mind and brain can be as good as they think it is, but like I said, desperate situation, desperate times come for de- you know, call for desperate you know, decisions. You could say, and you know, if, you never know what somebody somebody's capable of when they're desperate. 
why rob a house of tools when you can can well home depot like they've been got so much and don't get me wrong there's licks like that there's tons of licks like that like they do do that they do them all it's it's not like there's just one thing that they do there's usually a set of things right and it's what works for that moment or that time that day whatever so it just depends but yeah they, they'll do that too i'm poor but here's a doubt thank you ricardo you didn't have to do that man but thank you man i'm poor too <laughs> But thank you. I appreciate that, man. Thank you for the donation. That's awesome. It looks like this. There you go. Thumbs up. Definitely give a thumbs up before we get out of here. I really appreciate all the thumbs up. Looks like we have 86 thumbs ups. You guys are amazing, man. Home Depot has facial recognition software when you walk in. I know the owner. Yeah, they started that not that long ago, though, because um, one of the reasons why um because i you know i know um people were walking in and just grabbing things and like walking right out another thing was people were bringing in receipts that weren't real and what they do is they just walk in with the receipt they grab the thing off of the shelf and walk up to return it and then they get they didn't get the money for it um so there was just so many little scams that people were using some people were getting the cards with the money on the card because they didn't have receipt there was just so many things that people were doing i could tell you a million scams people were doing to them so eventually they had to start doing that and i do know some people that did get caught like that they have to get the guy with the barcodes in the self-checkout that was a big one there's a lot of them, man. So many of them. So many of them. They were definitely open for season. I guess. <laughs> they were open season. For sure. A lot of people looked at them as a target. It was hard for people not to see them as a target. It was just too easy. They can scan the item for $1, but someone else put the sticker on their bags. Yeah. Lots of things. And lots of people don't even look at that as such a bad thing. I mean... Not saying it isn't. I'm saying it is a bad thing. I'm just saying, like, some people will do those things that wouldn't even do the other things. Yep. But I think that that's, that's an obvious thing, right? I think everybody knows they're pieces of shit. I think the person doing it knows they're a piece of shit for doing it. But, you know, like I said, when they're desperate, what, you know. <laughs> get the people help i know what it means people are hurting absolutely that, that's kind of the point you know a lot of people do need help some people you can't save but what you can do is protect yourself people definitely need to know how not to look like a victim and you know, obviously some people need help, but they're going to be out there. They're out there no matter what. So until they do get locked up, caught, busted, shot, killed, whatever the case happens, you know, they're out there. They'll always be out there no matter what. You'll never not have that. So, yeah, that it's not even a possibility, right? Like, think about you and your most desperate. It's hard for somebody to understand, I think. Because that's not possible. It's not possible to do that. Especially from a man's perspective. It's hard for a man to, to admit when he's weak, right? When he's desperate and weak. They don't want to do that. Men like to look powerful and put together and, you know, so... That was a good one. Very true, Daniel. Very true. That, that's what it boils down to is loving yourself and taking care of yourself. Being the best, your best friend, your own best friend. Uh, Lad, what's the best thing to install on the outside of your house to deter people casing your house? Cameras. Cameras. Um, excuse me. The, the one thing is just the position of your, your property. But, but if you can't do anything about that, cameras, a sign. Stuff like that, signs saying you have cameras or signs saying you have an alarm, that's an automatic deterrent. And the reason why is because 
you'll have 20 homes on a block. Six of them will have those. The other 14 won't. You know what I mean? So you'll just go to a different place. You're not going to waste your time with that. The thing is, though, is so many people fake it. So people can walk up to your door and actually see if you actually got it. Like, you know, sometimes you can look like, look through like the little window thing. You can see if they have a keypad or two, you can just look at the door and you can see if they have it or not. So. <laughs> a giant penis statue outside. That would deter the best. Yeah, definitely. Um, So one thing I want to say this really quick, because. Okay. So if you put your dog in a, Cage, when you leave your house, you are literally preventing your dog from doing its job. I couldn't tell you how many times I've seen that, and you can hear it. So I knock on the door, right? What happens? I hear a cage and the dog barking. I know, and I can hear the dog, but I can't see him, right? I can't see the dog coming, but he's barking. He's in a cage. You've just Made it perfect for me because guess what? I know you're not home now. You know why? Because your dog's fucking barking and you're not coming to the door. Why didn't you come to the door when your dog is going crazy in a cage? Dumbest thing ever. I'm not saying don't train your dog like cage training because there is a sort of training with cage training. But what I'm saying though is that if you leave your house and your dog is in the cage, he is literally a sign telling the a person that you are not home you're not home and your house is free to do whatever so that is a huge one a massive one and also just your dog period like if you have a little dog and your dog's like a, a little bitch dog that dog's an alarm he comes up to the door he's barking right rawr, 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 barking at the door you're not coming to the door because you're not there now you know, like, that's just a sign. I'm just saying that's a sign. Nothing, Kiefer. We're about to get out of here. We're talking crazy shit here, Kiefer. But I love you guys, and I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. 75 people in here. You guys are awesome. Uh, they will ring the door and see who. Yeah, well, that that's always the first thing. Always. Always the first thing. Normally, you, you usually have an idea, right? You don't go even to the door if you don't even have a If you know somebody's home, you don't do that, right? The first step is thinking nobody's home. That's why I was talking about the garage thing, because if somebody has an idea that somebody's there, then they're not going to even attempt it. But if they have a good idea that nobody's there, like I said about the garage, things in front of the garage, your garage looks messed up. I can tell you don't park in the garage. Your cars definitely aren't in the driveway. So uh, that's a good sign that you're not there. Now, if that garage door didn't have nothing in front of it and it was nice and clean, there's a great possibility your car's in the garage. Now, if you have a window to your garage and I can see through it, then I can see if your car's in there or not. So that's another sign. Don't leave those fuckers blank or open. Cover them up. All right, guys, I love you guys. Maybe we'll talk more about this next time because it is a hot topic and there's a lot more to it. I kind of I kind of made it pretty simple, but I could definitely go really in depth and uh, really blow your guys' mind. But uh, you guys do be careful out there. I love you guys and I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and watching me. Thank you guys for all the donations. Thank you to all the patrons and all the mods, man. The mods are great, man. You guys... You guys are such a blessing to my lives because I couldn't do it, man. I couldn't do it. All the links and everything else. You guys are amazing. You guys always show up too, man. I can't, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. You guys are awesome. Peace.